Welcome back at the Lodge with Jim and Michelle, a podcast celebrating life spent in the great outdoors. Whether you're an angler, a hunter, trapper, or someone just enjoying an active outdoors lifestyle, this show is for you. Join Jim Broughton and Michelle Sherman as they discuss outdoor news, opinions, events, and much more occurring over recent weeks. It's time now to pull up a chair, pour a favorite beverage, gather close to the campfire, and kick up those tired feet and relax, because you're back at the lodge. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Back at the Lodge. Just Michelle this week, I was at the POMA conference that stands for Professional Outdoor Media Association a couple weeks ago in Shreveport, Louisiana. Always a good time. I was able to interview a couple folks, including Jason Reed, who's in marketing at uh, Crosman Corporation, but really he handles the social media. So he'll, we'll talk about influencers and social media and marketing in the outdoor industry. And then my second guest on this episode is Mia. Many of you might recognize her as she was on the cover of Field and Stream uh, last year, I believe. We talk about that and also uh, her life as a mother, uh, wife, huntress, and just trying to make it in this world. So enjoy this brief podcast. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or comments, please email me, michelle at bulletproofcom, C-O-M-M dot com. You can also find me at Bulletproof Media Blog. Dot com. I just redesigned my website. If you go there, Sue Bookout with Sue B Media. Thank you so much, Sue. Enjoy your time. Well, back at the lodge, here we are. The podcast on the road again. It's just Michelle, no Jim this time. I am at the POMA conference. That stands for Professional Outdoor Media Association in Shreveport, Louisiana. Very exciting. I'm outside uh, on the patio, so you might hear some traffic noise. Hopefully it's not going to bother us too bad. <laughs> but with me today is a very special guest. We have Jason Reed of Crossman Corporation. What is your official title? Uh, marketing Communications Manager and ever increasingly uh, <laughs> it's um, also government, I mean I handle government relations oh, as well. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Jack the, of all trades and... <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to master all of them and spend all, 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 as much time as I can with them, but uh, so yeah, a lot of... Uh, Different responsibilities, sort of different roles, but um, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. How, how big is how big is Crossman? I guess like is there a lot of people in your department or um, like Cross- marketing per se? Or well, I'd say uh, company wide total, we have in our Bloomfield, New York factory, uh, we employ two hundred and fifty people roughly. Oh, okay. Um, so you know, American made. It's a lot of pr- people. Yeah, you know, it's we still have a lot of you know American pride in, in our in a lot of our products. Yeah. A lot of them are still built right there in in New York State. Um, but you know, obviously we're a global force, and uh, so we've got you know our sales reps all over the all over the world really. Yeah. Um, but uh, for our marketing department, you know, it's really uh, you know VP of marketing, myself. Um, you know, we've got a small graphics team, so you know, uh, we're we. Uh, a couple of us, but we, we, we run pretty efficiently, and yeah. and uh, yeah. And you handle the social media. I do. And it's just you, right? Like what you're saying, or do you have helpers? I no. So yeah, right now it's just you know me uh, running the strategy or building strategy for it. Uh, you know, really you know, trying to just. I mean, it's just you're constantly evolving with the yeah. times and this stuff. So it's it's const- I'm constantly tweaking. Uh, what we're doing there and, and how we get out the message of, of things like air rifles. Um, we also have the the, uh, the center point archery brand and we have center point scopes brand as well. Um, so I'm building a strategy for those as well. I mean, I just got the job a couple of months ago. So right? It's, yeah, I'm you still, tell- I'm still like you know. You're telling me, yeah, you got it like two weeks before shot show, <laughs> yeah. and then boom. Yeah. Shot show. Yeah, two weeks before shot show, I, I walked into the Crosman building uh, for the first time. And, uh, so you weren't even at the ATA show then, right? No, I was. Oh, you were? I, okay. I was, I was there at the ATA show. Um, so yeah, this, you know, still, <laughs> still working on, uh, you know, building, building the, 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 the solid foundation to be able to take the solid into the future. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, um, since we're at the POMA conference, and uh, it's an annual conference held in June. It used to be held in March, which I appreciate it being held in June. Yeah. Because March was just too close to uh, yeah, too close to show season. Show season, and it's too yeah. crazy. The only nice thing about having it in March was if we got 
you know, they had a, a location in the south, so then it was kind of nice to right to, to versus Shreveport in June, where yeah, it's Shreveport gonna be like hundred degrees. <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cook here yeah. uh, on the range, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so speaking of that, you are what we, what we call in Poma a corporate partner, or CP member we call it. Um, and there's a range day, yep. so you go out there with your products. Yep. And what are you expecting, I guess, from this conference? Or what are you hoping to get? I mean, the, the great thing about coming to Poma for guys like me is that we, we get the interaction with very qualified media individuals. Um, and so I know that at any given time that I can rely on getting product in the hands of, of these people that it's going to be uh, written about or, or you know, filmed well. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a good purpose behind what, uh, you know, the guns that I send out. Because at the end of the day, I mean, the guns I send out, that is still a part of my budget. <clears throat> yeah. Know? So. Did you send them out for people to keep? Um, <clears throat> or do you have like a loaner program or? Um, a little bit of both. Oh, okay. I mean, in, in certain, it really all depends because I, I understand that this is not an exact science anymore yeah. with being in this style of position. And a lot of times, a lot of these brand influencers, they'll accept product for their services. And so, you know, versus I, paying for versus, a post or whatever. Right. Yeah. So instead, of, you know, and now some people are a mix of both. And it, so it's, it's, you can't just be black or white with it in order to get the coverage that you need anymore. Yeah. And it was funny, I actually had this conversation yesterday uh, <laughs> with my accounting team. And I said, guys, it's um, you, know, you have to adjust to it, to, to each person, um, yeah. depending on, uh, on what they can provide. Like there's so many semis going by right now. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Let's wait for that to go by. Fire oh, fire, 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 yeah. Looks like they're going towards Margaritaville. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's not an exact, you know, an exact science, but I do have, you know, I do have a good loaner program, um, but I try not to give away too much product um, as it is, but uh, it's just one of those things that uh, in this style of position, you, you know, you have to just go, you really have to go with the flow. Yeah. On, on things in order to be able to garner the coverage that you need and, and honestly you know they're, they're, and we had this discussion this morning in the board meeting about the difference between you know traditional media and, and these digital influencers that are coming up and, and both you treat both differently that's true um, and, yeah. and, it's very, and there's no black and white there's no manual you can just open up be like oh no. okay this is what I do right and, and that's the crazy part is that yeah. we're now all caught in this um, and, yeah, every and company's struggling with it. Every company is is asking those questions every single day. So if you're asking that question, you're not alone. <laughs> I can yeah. tell you that much. Yeah. So. But. Well, yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know. I should say that both of us are on the Poma board, um, and you were recently elected to a committee. Oh, yep. How do you like? Or you were like elected to the head of the committee? <laughs> yeah, you know it, that was funny because I knew that I, I knew that they were gonna do it. Yeah. And, and so I was I was like, you know what? I, I'll you know I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'll, I'll definitely you know sign up for that. Well, I told Justin I was gonna I wanted to be on the social media committee. Yeah. And then they kind of like had this open ended question, all right? Who's gonna head up the membership committee? <laughs> and, and, and I could just feel everyone. And everyone like, was looking at you like. I'm like, ah, uh, all right, all right, but I'm happy to do it. And to yeah. be honest with you, this is actually something that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, and I've actually thought about this for a long time uh, because my whole journey in the world of the outdoors, I mean, I started, I was the blogger right? in, my high, in my college dorm room. Um, I didn't know anybody in this industry. I gave myself one chance and no backup plans to, you know, this was it. This is what I wanted all to get All or nothing. This is all or nothing. <laughs> and so I was just working my tail off for, for a couple of years and I started to, you know, give away my content actually uh, in an effort to just get, make those connections just to right. get recognized right yeah. make connections and, and then finally one of the members here Kevin Reese who's a past board member he got a hold of me and said you know you don't need to be doing this you should actually be charging people and, and I'm like I remember this conversation because I was like 21 years old I was I was not <laughs> I, I had no idea what I was doing and the idea of being able to, to charge people for, for what I was doing was almost foreign because I didn't wasn't sure if it was that good. There was nothing that I could measure right. it up. But against. we always we always judge ourselves harshly yeah. and 
So coming into Palma, it taught me how really how to be an outdoor media professional. Um, so Kevin encouraged you to join Palma, and yeah. then, wow, okay. Yeah, so we actually we connected through LinkedIn. Um, I was just asking questions. You know, I love asking questions of other executives, and I, and I, and I pick their pick people's brains all you know constantly because look, I don't know everything yeah. here. Um, and so I was just asking questions, and he got a hold of me and said, you know, you need to join this organization. Oh, this that's is cool. The, this is the uh, this is the one to be at. And for the longest time, it was me and Justin Morrissey who were the youngest guys here. Um, yeah. And I've always thought in the back of my mind, you know, there there are opportunities for uh, to grow the membership here, and specifically within this, you know, the, the, the younger more, group, the younger group. Because mm-hmm. here's here's really here, here's really what happened in my mind. I was sitting in a class my sophomore year of college, but it was the spring semester, so all my friends that were seniors were panicking. Right? They didn't know what they were going to do after graduation, and so I bills figured, are going to come due. And right. So I figured. I got three years to work with here. If I can get something going, yeah. um, by the time I'm done, by the time I graduate, you know, maybe I won't be as stuck in the water. So um, is that when you started blogging? That's when. Yep. That's when I started. Uh, my first blog was pushing the wild limits, and uh, just kind of hacked away from there. Uh, but, you know, being a part of Poma, it really helps me connect with the people that. Uh, yeah, it's really the best, it's really great networking, especially if you want to get into the outdoor industry, hunting and shooting sports. Um, you you cannot not afford to <laughs> network. You really can't. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a very uh, simple, uh, very easy organization to, to be a part of. Um, especially if you're you know, for me as a student, it was you know very easy to get into. Um, yeah, because there's like reduced rates for students, isn't there? Yeah, it was like I'd, fifty bucks. Yeah, it's like it's no brainer. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. So hopefully, as now that you're part of the membership committee, that's obviously something you're going to uh, yep. look at and work on. I'm assuming the low-hanging fruit, so to speak. I think I think that's low-hanging fruit. Just yep. working on the students and yep. and whatnot. So well, that's cool. I think it's a good story that you have about how you just sort of went after it in the outdoor industry, and now you're working for a major corporation. It, you know, it's definitely it's it's definitely humbling. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. You know. I mean, a lot of people. A lot of people think, oh, must be nice, right? That's kind of a that's kind of a knee-jerk reaction when it comes to when you hear something, somebody works for Under Armour or someone works for Remington or whatever, like, oh, must be nice, like they, you know, somehow they got that job, Yeah. their dad worked there or whatever. And it's like, no, like, people really do work hard and get these positions for a reason because they're hard workers and they didn't just stumble upon it and, yeah. and, and whatnot, so I think your story is a true testament to that because even at lunch you were saying about how um you wrote articles for Amoland and and then when it came time to interview for this job <laughs> they said well we need a sample of your article and you're like well here's one I actually wrote on you yeah yeah <laughs> and it's up on Amoland yeah so yeah there's a lot of sweat equity that went into where I am now and there it wasn't it, easy no it yeah. definitely wasn't and, and not to say that there will not you know there's going to continue to be a lot of sweat equity to, to maintain this yeah. um, and so I'm very aware of that and I I'm very humble I, I'm humbled every single day when I walk into into the doors of Crosman um, for a lot of reasons but you know a lot of good people helped open doors um, gave me advice along the way and yeah and, a lot of mentors and yeah a lot of a lot of good mentors along the way I mean I, I scrape my knees you, you know but I just, <laughs> I, it's like anything it doesn't matter if you're trying to get into the hunting industry or not I mean yeah you, you hard work is hard work yeah, hard work you still have to put work. in your time you do you do yeah. so yeah. but um which I think a lot of people um we were talking about influencers at lunch too, and and a lot of people, when you say the, the term influencer or YouTube star or Instagram star, like there's kind of this negative connotation around it. And I believe, from my point of view, I believe that negative connotation is because they think that they haven't put in their time. I, Would you agree with that? I think maybe at a knee-jerk reaction, it, it could be. But again, that is, and as we've talked about. Uh, social media is not a it's not just a quick fix to business it, this stuff takes a lot of time it takes a lot of effort you talk to Freddie at Amoland there he'll tell you just how hard it is to build an internet business um, and he's been at it for yeah 
Well, I can't even know, like a decade? It must yeah, be more than a decade. I don't even I, know. I think so. Yeah. So, I mean, this stuff, and, and I've worked, you know, extremely hard at this stuff, and, and you know, you know, just to, from a writing perspective, I don't make the most money. I make enough to go elk hunting every yeah. year, but so this stuff, it, it, there's, because, because, you know, this stuff changes so quickly, uh, you know, you have to have an immense amount of content to be able to, to float. I mean, I'm dealing with that now on a, on a from yeah. a, uh, from a work perspective, is looking at, okay, how much content do I really have to have in my, in my queue? Right. To be able to keep this, to be able to be uh, right. legitimate for branding, right. you know, so it is. That's, I would agree, that's, for me, even for my clients, that's the most difficult part, is content. A lot of my clients are uh, TV talent, TV stars, and they have a lot of content, just because that's the nature of the business. But I have some clients that aren't, and um, and they don't have a budget to do much. So then I'm like, yeah. you're really scraping. I'm like, you know, trying to find, like, who are your partners? Uh, you know, what can we do here, you know? It's it's been really really a challenge with with yeah. some of them, but well, I, and again, I think I think everybody underestimates how much time goes into creating oh my gosh. good content, and, and it really does. Yeah, and, and I understand it, and I see it as a freelancer, and I see it at, you know in my position as a marketing manager, uh, taking both sides into perspective. I mean, it just takes time. Yeah, I mean, you might. Even if it's a one, two minute video, I mean, it's gonna take most of the week. It could, yeah. could take, you know, two or three days to get done. Um, so you have a, do you have a team that helps you? Like I said, you, you said you have a small graphics department. So yeah. you're like, hey, I wanna create this meme <laughs> or whatever, right? Yeah, I, got, I got good guys in the art department. They're- uh, To help they're, you with that. But then what about true. video? Like. Uh, so right now I've got a, uh, I do have an in-house guy. Uh, we are working on some, some unique projects uh, for Crosman.com. Uh, we're working on a big, uh, actually we're, we're starting to pull together a unique, um, let's give you a little inside scoop here, we're working yeah, yeah. on a, uh, we are working on a unique uh, public relations campaign uh, to, you know, going into the fall, um, ho I'm hoping to kick it off right around uh, the week of uh, National Hunting and Shooting, uh, Hunting and Fishing Day. Sure, um, good time. So it's going to, you know, have some, some things to do with air guns, um, but uh so I'm really, really looking forward to that. We're going to pull the, you know, we're hoping to pull together some of the, uh, some of the bigger names in the, uh, in the industry that can, uh, can be, um, can be featured on this. But uh, could that be the Shockies since they are, you know? Oh, I suppose that <laughs> might be a since call, they call are. Yes. Um, but uh, we've been fleshing out plans there, and and, and really having having an in-house guy. <clears throat> um, he's actually a, a film student uh, that just graduated. He's. Uh, and he's been an intern with Crosman for many, many years now. Um, he and I gel pretty well, gelled pretty well together to work on projects. That's cool. Um, and it's really unique. I, I like, I really like this kid. His name's Atticus. And that's a cool name. Yeah, he's a cool dude. And, and because he was trained as a film student, and different it, perspective. It's, it's a very different person. He comes at it with such a unique uh, set of skills. The way he breaks down a video. Uh, and how well how he sets things up, and then how he edits things. Wow. It's a lot different than. You know, me just running out there with my, my camera shooting for, for YouTube videos, you know Right, what I mean? or Which, you need a quick Facebook, yeah, right. whatever. So I really enjoy having, you know, working with with him on that. So we're, uh, yeah, from, from, from Crosman, you can definitely expect more more videos coming out, uh, coming okay. out this year. So This fall, look for it. Yeah, this this fall, uh, be looking for, for something cool. Do you can tell us any insights into SHOT Show next year? You guys have any big plans, like uh, big parties and... <laughs> I hope I'm invited, by the way. <laughs> it's always a party at the Crosby booth. But. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, I've seen the Shockies show up, right? Yes. Yeah, so oh, my God. Isn't there just like a crowd, like, whoosh? Uh, yeah, there, there usually is. I'll tell you, that was um, very interesting. Uh, you know, like I said, got the, got the job right before SHOT Show happened. So, like, to experience that dynamic that it, with yeah. how many more people came to the booth when when, when they like, knew the shockies were gonna be there that was uh, that was that was an experience were you guys across from the outdoor sportsman group booth no we were across from smith and weston i believe okay that was i, I think that was thompson center arms i was across okay. from the outdoor and and they work with Tom, the shockies work with yeah. thompson center arms for their yeah. rifles and whatnot and yeah. um yeah so then when they would show up it was just like woof, <laughs> this yeah. group of people would just yeah Surround them, like, um, you know, same thing, Ted Nugent or Gunny or any of yeah. those guys, you know. 
and it's so funny because we're all in the industry so I just we're not necessarily consumers per se at SHOT Show like your typical consumer crowd but we act like it when it comes to these people that's for oh, sure oh yeah. yeah 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 I mean I've met you know some of my some of my heroes I've had the, the privilege to meet at um, SHOT Show at SHOT Show and yeah. uh, as one of the one of the guys that I kind of influenced the start of my journey in writing I got to meet him and, and tell him thank you for no oh, who writing. was that you can share it <sighs> yeah yeah you don't have to if you don't no, want to that's fine it's no, cool so, so I I got the, this whole crazy thing started because I had to write an essay about a writer and so I picked an outdoor writer and uh, I had just read uh, Backcountry Bowhunting Guide to the Wild Side by Ken Haynes and so I wrote this this essay and I'm like I had so much fun writing this essay I'm like I, I gotta keep writing and then all of a sudden now we're here I'm sitting on the board of directors for Poma you know from one essay to another I'd been writing for a long time anyway yeah. but that was kind of like the, the so you the, got the, to meet Cam I, did, I got to meet Cam did you tell him the story or? yeah and what'd he say hey, he thought it was he thought it was pretty cool yeah. you know what I mean and uh, so you know, but are you going to try and get Cam Haynes on as a as pro staff <laughs> <laughs> little inside joke there for our podcast yeah, yeah. listeners about pro staff because we had a conversation about that term being loosely thrown around so yeah. i'm using air quotes when i use the term pro staff but <laughs> which you can't see but yeah no it you know there's it's, there's been a lot of a good people like i said a lot of good people that have helped me get here and 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 yeah. i'm really looking forward to be being uh, working with the membership committee here at poma to uh to expand that to expand opportunities for for people like me yeah. You know, that, that are looking to get a foot in the door somewhere, um, that this can be an organization of true mentorship, um, yeah. of true connection. And uh, so we, we're just That's looking cool. to, to grow the grow the membership with, with, with people that are hungry for it. Um, you know, if you're hungry for it, you got to look this place up because you can make amazing things can really happen. Awesome. So, well, I think that's a great commercial for Palma. So with that, I think we'll wrap it up because we're at a little over 20 minutes. So that's pretty good. There you go. Goes so, so quick when it you're does. just when you're talking about what you love. Yeah. And, you know, it, it really goes by. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Well, thank you. Obviously, I'll see you over the next five days. Yep. At yep. the Poma conference. <laughs> oh, we'll all be good friends. <laughs> you're right. We'll be all, we'll all be best be best at buddies at the end of this at that's the end right. of this trip. So thank you everyone for listening, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Back at the Lodge. Michelle again, no gym, Michelle solo, because I'm at the Poma Conference, and with me now is Mia Anstein, who is a very famous blogger, outdoor writer, uh, guide, uh, mom, wife, <laughs> podcaster. You just started a brand new podcast. Right. You have a lot of labels that we can <laughs> definitely give you. So um, which one of those are you most proud of, I suppose? Yeah. I guess basically the, all of them encompass that I like to be a mentor, and through everything that I there do, you go. I try yes. to encourage other people. So, and I guess that's it, the label that fits yeah. me the most, but describes the least. All of it, <laughs> all of it adds to that mentorship. That's very good. I love it. And what is the name of your podcast that you do with your daughter again? Leah and I started a podcast called Mac Outdoors Podcast. Okay. And yeah. So. Okay. Good. That's the two of us right now, <laughs> and we're going to start adding some interviews in there as she heads off to school and we're going to and be it's in just separate you. spaces yeah because yeah. here i am without jim yeah and, you know jim couldn't make it to the poma conference he does come he just couldn't make it this year yeah. so and see and we listen to your podcast and it's yeah. nice that you do have that ability to like bring someone else in if you're in another country on vacation right. or something <laughs> right. like that right. right and so hopefully she can do that at college also and oh that'd be fun bring some some kids her age in right like college kids that are adults or <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, that'd be cool yeah kids from class or whatever and yeah yeah she has that would be really cool or professors heck that'd be awesome so um so at the poma conference you are a brand new board member congratulations yes. thank you <laughs> uh any goals for the poma board part of my goal is to bring in what i've seen this week already is bring in some younger Yes. people onto the membership and so yeah. forth and get that fresh perspective and insight. Well, you are in the membership committee, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think we all are, are we? Yeah, <laughs> I know, technically. Yeah, technically as board members, we should all be encouraging people to sign up for Palma. So, yes, yeah. every one of you should sign up for Palma. <laughs> well, and it's really cool. The people that I've met over the years through Palma have really, it's a great network of people yes. who, we all have the same mission. We all want to 
spread the same messages right. and support the same thing. Right. So if you we ever all might have different ideas how to do that. Yeah. But at the end of the day. Yeah. If you need help or have yeah. questions, there's always somebody that you can reach out to. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was fun, like at the board meeting, our president, James Powell, who's a communications director for Ducks Unlimited, he was saying to you and the two other board members to look at um, finding a board mentor. And I was like, don't look at me. <laughs> don't look, I'm not a board mentor. Don't look at me. I guess so. we should have had some people raise their hands. So yeah, who, who are we looking at? Yeah. Who would be a good board men mentor? That's what he should say. Who would be a good board? It's like when people ask um, if you would be a reference, like for jobs. And I always get a kick out of it because they always assume you're going to be a good reference, but they never say, "Well, are you going to be a good reference?" Yeah, I might not be a good reference. <laughs> yes, I will be a reference for you. Might not be a good one. <laughs> you might not want to. I always get a kick out of that, yeah. so anyway. <laughs> so the board is really great, and I'm on actually the board for our local safari club, international chapter. Oh, cool. And I sit on the sportsman's roundtable committee in Colorado, and then I've been involved um, with the Parks and Wildlife Game Commission. So, But in that, like thinking of boards and who is your yes. mentor, there's always somebody who can mentor you in some way, and some people excel in one avenue and not in another. That's true. And, That's true. and so yeah. it, you can't have more than one. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And I think as women, like, um, you know, when I was worked in the corporate world, when I had a big girl job, uh, I always had different mentors for different things, too, because yeah. you, you knew that you needed this person to maybe help you with this aspect of your job but this person was better at this. So right. I think it's, I agree with you. I think it's the same thing. So yeah, I miss that. Did you have a big girl job? So I actually was in the building industry. In Is that right? Construction um, on the, yeah, the manufacturing and supply side for 18 years. Is that right? Yeah. And I kind of went into that via my, my dad. He was a builder. And okay. so of course, since my dad was a builder, I obviously knew everything about building some way and or another. And you obviously wanted and, to do it too. Yeah, and I don't know how, but anyways, I was kind of sucked into that and did really well at it and made tons of money hand over fist, but I also worked night and day. Um, uh. And so there were trade-offs, you know, I made a lot of money, but I didn't have a lot of free time. And um, when the economy crashed several years ago, all that commission went from something to nothing. And so that's how I got into writing. Oh. Was actually when that slowed down, I had more time to hunt and fish and be outside and started sharing more of my stories. And, and you're like, how can I do this? Yeah and, yeah, and started getting paid for it. And I don't make as much money, but I sure have a better quality of life and get yeah. more time with my daughter. Yeah. And stuff. Instead of taking her to my office, I actually take her to my office in the outdoors. And yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> That's and didn't she do her first guide last year? Was that? She's she's been on trips and guiding since she was. I don't. She's been hunting since she was little. Yeah. I mean, since she was tiny, I took yeah. her with me. Um, in Colorado, you can't guide till you're 16. But she's oh, okay. had her first aid and CPR since she was 10 or 11. Sure. And she's been helping other people, although she wasn't an official guide. So. Okay. Um, this last year, I think she wrote articles about, um, she guided her cousin, he's 12. Oh my and gosh. it was his first mule there, it was a doe, and yeah. she helped him with that. I had a rough year last year on my hunts, and it was really cool for her to go with me on one of my hunts and be my guide, and like, walk me through everything, because even though I've hunted for years and stuff, I just wasn't confident in myself, and... She's kind of talked me through it like nothing, nice. and she's a pro, and that That's was nice. really cool, like, to be to yeah. be her client. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, my girlfriend that you hear me talk about my podcast, Cassie. Uh, she is does all the adventures with me, and a lot of the adventures that we do is we do running, races, 5Ks, 5Ks and half marathons is usually what we do. We've never done a 10K, I don't know why, but, um, and so when we run together, she's my coach. Uh-huh. So she's not really my coach, like, on my own when I'm training for a race, but when we're actually in the moment, I like having, like, she kind of takes on that role of, yeah. you know, you can do this, just put one foot in front of the other, you know, you got this, whatever, you know, like, she's, and she does a really good yeah. job at it. And aren't there, there's times in our lives where you really need that. Yeah. And it's well, nice I'm happy to, to like, let her fill that role because yeah. it just, it it, yeah, we switched from being friends to her, like, you know, just being my coach a little bit. So, and I told her, I'm like, you should do this as a job because 
She's just, I don't know, it's like her tone of voice, her demeanor. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She just does a really great job at it. So. Yeah. And that's something, I know, in guiding, there's all different si types of guides that you run into and stuff. The psychology of and, guiding, right? Yeah. And, I mean, <laughs> in, your, in your head, you know, you have the little guy that talks to you in your head. But then yeah. if you're with a guide and the guide is calming and, like, walking you through something, it makes you relax and do better. Whereas... Contrary if they're to that, high strong. I had a guide that like really frazzled me, and I was trying to like tune him out, calm me on a hunt, and ended up like having a hunt that was nothing like what I write about or oh. talk about or speak about. And it, that kind of like was like, what happened? How did that happen? You know? <laughs> yeah. And so there's lessons you learn, but you have yeah. to like know how to handle a guide that is a good, good trainer, a good that can work well with you and your personality. And I think as women, sometimes men think you don't know what you're doing. Oh, and, of course. And so, of course, they're trying to tell you, do this, do this, do this. And you're like, wait yeah. a minute, I'm not ready. Then, you know. Right. I've even written about that. Like, know when to say no and don't, you know, don't take the shots until you're ready and stuff yeah. like that. Whereas last year I had that moment where it was like I, I missed an animal. And I, I didn't wound an animal. I just flat out missed, which I've missed animals before. But it wasn't the miss that frazzled me. It was the allowing of someone else to get in my head. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. So regardless of how much you've hunted, right. you know, I've hunted for years. I've hunted lots yeah. of animals. I've guided. Yeah. There's always those moments yeah. that you need. You can still lose through. your confidence. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I've talked to some of my other, you know, girlfriends in the in the industry, and um, you know, I think a lot of people like hunting by themselves just because of that. Mm -hmm. Because how do you, when you're out in the outdoors, yeah, how do you tell someone? stop stressing me out yeah like you're, you're stressing me out stop it <laughs> and especially a woman telling a man that and the man is their guide yeah or whatnot I yeah that's really yeah. hard so that's something I'd be curious to know how other people deal with that and actually I want to go Lanny Barnes lives close by and we're good friends yeah. and she actually does classes to train police officers in how to like de-escalate de-escalate yeah. check that back in and I want to go and talk to her and see like go through one of the classes even to, to is there a way to in. relate this yeah to hunting when you're out in the woods yeah. yeah that's a good that's a good point that'd be kind of cool yeah I think there's a lot to hunting like it's very similar to the game of golf where it's the mental aspect yes that we don't talk about for whatever reason like the mental aspect in golf is talked about quite a bit like Sergio Garcia just won the Masters and the whole reason he just won the Masters when he was so close so yeah. many many times everyone knows it's his mental game yes because he could have won many many tournaments yes. in the last 10 years or more that he's been doing it but he just he it was always in his head yeah and I think the same thing happens on a hunt but we don't really talk about yeah. it. I wonder why that is I and I wonder the same thing but um, just here today at the at the conference somebody was talking about how ridiculous golf is and how they don't understand it or why somebody would want to golf but is that right that's funny. I just heard that today so oh, it's funny, funny that you say that yeah. analogy because I actually, when I worked in the building industry, we took our clients golfing, and I loved to golf. I was really good at golf, but as you're saying, it's a, it's a mental thing as well, and I think one of the things that I've seen, and I'm not sure if that's what I was going through on the hunt, that I had a hard time, you know, with yeah. my confidence, Yeah. but um, that you have to fill your tag, or you have to attain this, whereas when you're golfing, if you're too focused on each bit of your swing, you're going to mess up. Oh, totally. You know, so if the you're, best, if you're the too best much swings, in your head. You the know? best swings are when you're like, I was not thinking about anything. Yeah. Like the you best times. You just relax yeah. and follow through. And my husband's good. like, wow, that was a really great shot you hit. What were you doing? What were you thinking about? And then I, I'm like, I'm actually, I wasn't thinking about anything. <laughs> like my head, and he's like, your you got to do that. Your memory is there. And <laughs> yeah, he's like, you got to just clear, you got to get out of your head. Yeah. So it's, it is very comparable. And I also compare golf a lot when I'm talking about like sporting plays and trap. Trap's a big one where other competitors get in your head. And oh you my really God, have yeah. To like keep them out of your head. Um, my daughter shoots competitively in is that right? shotgun. Yeah. And that's one thing I always compare it to is golf. You know, and it's like you have, really have to have that the muscle memory, the follow through, and the mental focus. Yeah, to be because all three of these sports that we're talking about, if you want to consider hunting a sport, I know that's a whole other debate, but all three of them <laughs> that we're talking about uh, are really individual activities. Mm -hmm. You know, trap shooting, skeet shooting, archery, rifle hunting, yeah. golf. Very much individual activities. And yes, you have your supporters with you. You have your caddy. 
yeah. you have your trap coach, you have your guide, but it's still at the end of the day about you. Yes. And your yep. ability and whether or not you can pull the trigger, you can make the shot. Yeah. My yep. one time, the one time, I used to do trap quite a bit. And I was at the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation. Uh, they do a caucus event with their Democrats versus Republicans. And I had, I had to go there for a sportsman challenge. I did a lot of with government affairs. Many people I don't know that, but I had, I did a lot with government <laughs> stuff, yeah, back in the day. And, um, and I was shooting, I was doing really well. And so I was, I was just with these couple congressmen and people, and like we were just on the line, we were shooting very well. And all of a sudden one of the guys goes, you've hit every shot. Well, thanks. Cause I just, I was, I was on record. I was almost, I was going to do 25 out of 25 and said I shot 24 out of 25. Yep. And I'm like, if you didn't say anything. If you wouldn't have said anything. Yeah. And it's the same thing with golf too. Yeah. Oh, you going to put this for Eagle. Well, shit, I didn't know that. Yeah. This was a par five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, holy shit, I didn't know you're that. Right. So, yeah. Anyway. Or like, you know, you're going to shoot an animal and, uh. The guide might say something like, this is the biggest buck I've ever seen, right. or oh, this is, you know, the big ranch buck I was telling you about. And or, that's something a lot of people tell you if you're going to go hunting, is like, don't look at the antlers. Yeah. Don't look at the horns. Like, focus on the kill zone, stuff like that, so that you're not having that expectation. That buck fever. Or, you know, you're, you're, you're not accelerating the moment past that moment. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, that's a really good point. Yeah. I think, I think there's room this is what we're talking about, but this whole mental game and psychology of hunting and for people to like explore that more and help, help yeah. other hunters and especially women. Yes. We talk about confidence. Yeah. But I believe it's more than just confidence. I, I, yeah. I think there's more to it than just that. So. Right. And I think there is too. And that's confidence generally comes with experience. But as I said, like I have a lot of experience, so you, but know, you still can get, but messed I still up. got rolled back and it's like, yes. well, it's okay. Pick yourself up, keep going. And that's kind of what is amazing. And it was in the field and stream article. That was kind of it too. Like you can have somebody be your mentor that you didn't yeah. expect. And right. my daughter in New Zealand was like a mentor as well. You know, like when you hit that wall, like, Hey, keep going. Just like you and you're running like, Hey, you're not there yet. You can go another step. Yeah. Let's talk about the film stream <laughs> article. Cause that has been a year. Not quite a year, but almost. Yeah. Yeah. That you were featured in that you were on the cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was 11 women and women make a difference in the industry. And it wasn't just, um, well-known women. It was every day, really every day common women, yeah. um, that even some of them I hadn't heard of. Some of them I've worked with. Some of them I know personally, but yeah. some of them I hadn't I agree. heard some of. I Some of them I haven't heard of either. But yeah. they, a lot of them are doing big things. So that was yeah. It was how did you to be feel? Recognized. Because I know I know how I know how I respond to this question because I'm a woman. And, but how did you feel seeing yourself on that cover and being in that article? Actually, it was really interesting because I knew that I was going to be in the article um, because they sent photographers to take pictures. Okay. Um, professional photographer so I knew I was going to be in the article um, and they had interviewed several I don't know how many total women um, and the oh this could possibly be a cover shot and I'm thinking the photographer is just saying that because, just to build your you know, confidence to build you yeah. up or whatever yeah. okay yeah um, and actually Dean from Swarovski from Swarovski Optics was in Africa and I, I wake up really early without my alarm clock and I'm awake at like four in the morning getting my coffee and he met, he messages me, he texts me, congratulations on the cover. And I'm not even awake yet. And I was like, what, like what, what is he talking about? And then I get on, he's like, yeah, get on Instagram. And, and there I was like on the cover. And I, so I really was like, am I awake? Like, am I dreaming? Like, what yeah, is going on? Because yeah. I'm five am foot. Am I being punked? I'm five <laughs> foot two, I'm not blonde. I had all my clothes on. Like, how could I be on yeah. the cover of a magazine? <laughs> You had all this gear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You had all this gear on. Yeah. yeah. So it really was like surreal at first. And actually yeah. Tony Bynum here from POMA, the vice president, um, he, he called me and said congratulations yeah. as well. And I was like, is this for real? He's like, man, it's real. Like yeah. you should be proud and be happy. Yeah. And I was like, he's, yeah. I'm like, I'm not saying I'm not proud. I just, uh, I'm like. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel, because um, cause for me, I feel like I don't deserve this. Yes, definitely. And that's the woman. Definitely. That's the woman in us. Um, it's like, why do we well, think that? I also have to say Because would a man feel that way? Some men, guides, uh, outfitters said, um, there are other women doing more than you in the industry that deserve the cover more. 
They said that to you? Yes, I actually had people say that. And so, and... And what, what did they expect to you to say? Like, what response are they looking for? I don't know. By saying that to That's you? Because it's a I very hurtful like, statement, for one thing. Well, and I would say it didn't hurt me because I'm like, there are a ton of women doing great things. And that's why women are growing so much. You know? yeah. So it didn't hurt me, but I was just like, well, a lot of people in the industry said this guy's a jerk, so apparently he really is a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> he just validated well, it right now. Good so. for you. Good for you for turning that around. Yeah, because, that, again, that would be something that I'm like, you know, well, you're right or whatever. You know, I would yeah. let it get in my head. And, and ruin me for a day. Well, you and, know? And yeah, well, that didn't, but really, um, I try not to brag. I, I'm really not, not good. I at, agree with this. I'm like, not yeah. good at self promotion and yeah, stuff. And so, right. like, I actually had you some, are very humble. Somebody very called great. me and they're like, you need to put that as your profile. And I was like, but then people are going to think I'm like being conceited. No, no, you need to do that. Like, this is yeah. a big deal. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I know. It's so, so there's hard. that aspect for me personally. I don't know if everybody's like no, that. No, I'm like that too. I hate talking about myself. Yeah. I don't even, t- I mean, I don't like wearing my name badge at home. <laughs> That's that's yeah. how that's how bad I want to be incognito. I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about my clients. Right. You know, like I'm hosting the cocktail hour. I was saying tonight, like mm-hmm. they're like, "Would well, you want to say something?" Like, no, I'm actually hosting the cocktail hour for my clients. For your clients. I'm yeah. not hosting it for me. Yeah. I'm paying for it, but I want it to be about them. About so, them. Yeah. But I just I don't yeah. like, and I'm a, I'm in the PR industry, and I don't like talking about myself. I don't know. I. <laughs> this is awesome like this has been a really great conversation I love this I think we can go on and on and on yeah. about you know what you're doing in industry and how All you're helping other things. women and yeah, um, yeah but I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me on on my podcast and hopefully I can uh, we can I can be on with you guys yeah I need to I need to on. figure out how to do the interviews better and stuff like that I actually yeah. guest host on Orange Lutheran Radio and oh. I, do, I do like a five minute segment tips or encouragement for women or just general shooting or hunting stuff like that um, and then I guess host with Bruce Hetchian from White Tail Rendezvous that's so right he was that, saying that, that one I did some interviewing and I mean I've He's done so fun. interviews for NSSF and stuff like that but as far as our podcast the, the way Leah and I started it was she's going off to college and we were like, when you're gone, we need to figure out a way to keep her working because she actually writes for Girls with Guns, and she, you know, she's doing her own stuff. But I'm like, we need to still keep yeah. a way to keep it keep going connected and, and stay connected. So we started yeah. the podcast, like introducing ourselves, what we do, giving tips, and then hopefully when she heads off, we'll evolve it into the interviews. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> learn that, learn the Skype part of it and all that jazz. Right. Yeah. There's a lot more to it. I know. Well, cool. Well, thanks for thanks for being on my podcast today. Thank you for having me. That's really cool. <laughs>